All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us at What's Next. Uh, I'm Matthew Quinn. I'm your host today. Uh, and we're going to be discussing what's next in the accountability of American theaters, specifically as related to the Black Lives Movement. Uh, I'm very happy to be joined today by uh, Marie Sisko and Bruce A. Lemon Jr. Thank you. Thank you both for coming. Pleasure to have you here. All right. Um, Marie Sisko is a producer that has worked at the National Black Theater, the New Black Fest, The Lark, the Public Theater, Lee Daniels Entertainment, and currently with the Apollo Theater. Marie recently worked as a co-producer on the feature film U.S. versus Billie Holiday. She was a producer for the TV pilot, Good People, directed by Lee Daniels, as well as the pilot, The Miss Pat Show, directed by Debbie Allen. She holds a BFA from the Theater School of DePaul University in Theater Arts, an MA from College from Columbia College Chicago in disciplinary in interdisciplinary in arts. Bruce Lemon is a storyteller born and raised in Watts, California. As a child, his father made him write stories and read them aloud in the hallway as punishment for lies and mischief. He's still in trouble. Host of 89.3 KPCC, In Person's Unheard LA, Associate Artistic Director and Ensemble with Cornerstone Theater Company, Artistic Director of Watts Village, and company members of Illyrian Players and Collaborative Artistic Block. Actor, writer, director, producer, creative collaborator, hobbies include holding a mirror up to America, rabble rousing, chasing dreams, working for the reimagining of his community and listening to the kids. Thank you again. Thank you. Following, following the murder of George Floyd, a resurgence of the BLM mu music movement, Black Lives Matter, spread across the world. In the theater community, Maurice Sisko created a public Google spreadsheet and titled it, Theaters Not Speaking Out. It was open for anyone to edit, and it had a simple derivative, directive. Add names to this document who have not made a statement against injustices towards black people. It was posted at 5.50 p.m. PDT on that Saturday, May 30th, and shared on her personal Facebook page, as well as with the Theater Folks of Color Facebook group to which she belongs. I remember personally seeing the list when it came up on a friend's uh, Facebook page. It had been shared several times. And I, I remember when I first saw it feeling very excited and, and, and worried about the effect of this type of list. Um, on June 9th, an article from the LA Times came out. The spreadsheet that shook the theater world, Marie Sisko's Not Speaking Out list, which I freely paraphrased above. So after all that, Marie, why was it so important for you to post this list? And what has been the reaction uh, from all the different communities in the American theater community? 
Yeah, well, first, thanks for having me, Matt. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Happy to be here with you guys today. Um, so I posted the list when we were, you know, in the thick of the pandemic. I was yeah. home in Atlanta. I left New York. I thought it would be there for two weeks and ended up being there for a total of, I think, four months. Wow. Um, but I was home and, uh, you know, people were dying at alarming rates. And then we learned that Black people were dying at a much higher rate yeah. than other demographics. Um, and then, you know, we were in a revolution. Um, mm -hmm. Protests were happening um, all over the country. In Atlanta, um, especially, it hit down, I think, maybe when the list was posted, maybe a little bit after. And I noticed, you know, that a lot of companies were making statements about Black Lives Matter. Obviously, Black people were making statements about Black Lives Matter. People were, you know, posting images of protests. It was like the world had so, sort of taken a break from the pandemic and honed in on the revolution within the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that a lot of theater companies, predominantly white theater companies, companies that I have worked with um, and for recently, mm -hmm. um, that a lot of my Black friends have worked with and for recently, had not made any statements, had not posted anything in support of Black Lives Matter, um, any anti-racist um, mm -hmm. statements or posts. Uh, and not only were they not posting about uh, the injustices against Black people, but they were posting about their galas and fundraising um, and things that had nothing to do with uh, the ways in which we were being affected. And I immediately got angry. Um, and I was in several, you know, group texts with friends where, you know, we were kind of sharing the posts that were going around and kind of joking about it. And they're like, can you believe, you know what I mean, that they are doing this? Like, can you believe this is happening? Um, and I noticed that other friends were, had started calling out uh, the ones that I remember, Erica Dickinson Dispenza, who's a playwright, um, was calling out a, a certain company. And then a friend of mine, Jordan Cooper, you know, so people started publicly, you know, calling out names. Um, I was like, wow, like this, so it's not just us, you know, people are taking note and realizing it. And I was like, I wonder what other companies, you know, are doing business as usual, posting, but um, freely and happily take diversity funding, right, for doing uh, a black play once a year or having black artists uh, as resident playwrights or just for interviewing black people and not hiring them. Um, you know, I'm based in New York and so I know New York theaters, but I assume that this was happening across the country. So I was like, I'll make a spreadsheet and I'll put the two theater companies that I know of that, you know, we've been speaking about that haven't said anything. And the theaters not speaking out was just like a temporary name placeholder in the midst of my anger. And then I forgot to change it and people started <laughs> saying that name. So I just was like, well, this is, it is not speaking out list. Um, and so I, I put two names on the list and I initially shared it with only like 12 or 15 friends. I just shared it in the small group and I was like, Hey y'all, I just noticed this, noticed this, like, you know, just put people on. I just want to sort of like keep record and keep track of what's happening. And then like an hour later, after I shared it with just my friends, I was like, you know what, I'm going to share it with the larger group. And so I put it in, um, theater, uh, what is it? Theater people of color group on Facebook. And, you know, mm -hmm. I made a little statement that was like, hey, y'all, you know, we work at these companies, um, we slave at these companies, right? Um, they use us to, to produce work or to market things um, or, you know, whatever capacity we work in these theaters. Um, but when our brothers and sisters are being killed in the streets by their brothers and sisters and cousins, they're silent, you know? So I want to create a space to publicly acknowledge what's happening. And um, and then I posted it on my personal Facebook page. And I think, you know, at the end of that night, maybe there were like 80 something, 90 names. And that was shocking to me. Um, and then I think like two days later, there were over 300 theaters on the list. Most I, I'd never heard of. Um, theaters in every pocket of the country. Um, and then people started, you know, uh, texting me, I'm not texting me, emailing me and, and uh, you know, messaging me and being like, hey, I put these people on the list, like, but I just want you to know that this was also my experience there. Like, so I knew they weren't posting before I even put them on the list, before I even went to their Instagram or Facebook, because this was my experience working there. And I know the people and I know the infrastructure, so I know they aren't saying anything. So then mm -hmm. I sort of started getting flooded with testimonies and things like that from people. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was tagged in a Facebook 
thread post where somebody, where people were like talking about the list. And at this point, after like two days, it had been shared so much that no, a lot of people didn't know the origin of the list that I was the one who had posted it. And so I'm getting tagged in threads of people and I have no idea who these people are. And people are arguing about the list and upset about the list. And um, I saw someone on there saying that they had deleted a company from the list because they didn't think that that company should be on there. And then there's like people going back and forth. And so that's when I closed off the list to the public. Um, and I just had people to send me the name. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just started adding them by myself. Um, so that was kind of like the, the impetus and the, the initial stages of the list. Um, and then, you know, there were people, there were people, theater companies emailing me who were, who, you know, saying that the list was problematic, um, that I was causing problems. Um, hmm. Problematic. <laughs> right, I'm problematic. <laughs> there were several instances where, like, there would be a spokesperson from like a certain like group, like a city, or, like it's like five theaters would come together and like decide somebody was a spokesperson, and this person would email me, be like, "Hi, I'm speaking to you. I'm in this area theater, and like, there's like six of us who saw the list, and these are all the questions we have and all the suggestions we have." I was like, first of all, I'm not taking suggestions from you. First of all, I didn't ask for your opinion. I didn't ask for your suggestion. Um, if you have something you would like to add to the list, like that's all I'm taking. Um, and so, you know, that's part of the problem is that the list I think made white people feel, white people who run these institutions, like they weren't in control, you know? And that's part of the reason we're in this situation is because there's a power issue dynamic, right? So now white people felt like they weren't in control. They couldn't add to the list. They couldn't take away from the list. They were being publicly shamed. Um, mm -hmm. And so their way of having control was to come to me and say, well, you, if you're gonna have this list, then this is how it needs to be run and operated, right? And my response was always no. Um, <laughs> today and not tomorrow. Um, so, so yeah, and then like I had, I don't know how this woman got my number to this day. This woman called me from this theater company in Alabama and she was like, hey, are you the one who started the list? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I just want you to know, we just put out our statement. Um, and if there's anything you need, like, you know, just call us and let us know if you're ever in Alabama and need a job, like just random, like just a random array of things started to come out of this list. I think some people were scared. Um, I think some people felt like, oh, well, maybe I should get in good with her if she's controlling this list that everybody's looking at. Um, some people obviously didn't say anything um, and some people wanted to control the process. Um, so a few days after uh, the list was posted, a friend of mine, Victor Vasquez, who runs X Casting, reached out to me and he was like, hey, I want to start tracking um, all of the posts that are now coming out that people are, are now making. Um, and he was like, even, you know, people who have made statements before your list so we can start to hold people accountable because people were, you know, listing um, actions that they were gonna take. We're gonna be more this and we're gonna be more that. And, you know, we felt like a lot of it was hot air. And also just to say, um, I didn't post the list as a call for theaters to make statements. I mm -hmm. made the list as uh, an opportunity to reflect who hadn't made a statement and who was not speaking out. Right. And so I, I was never asking anybody to say anything like at this point, by the time I made the list, I know who you are. So mm -hmm. anything you say after this, I it, to me, it doesn't matter. Right. So just to be clear, I didn't make the list as like, hey, y'all, this is an opportunity for you to say something. Um, but when Victor joined me, we started to document the statements um, that people were making, the theaters were making so that later, you know, in case something was deleted or, you know, whatever, we sort of have a record and can go back and say, well, two years ago, during the pandemic, during the revolution, you said that you were gonna do A, B, C, and D, and you still haven't done any of those things. So what's going on? Um, so Victor joined me and then, so he was in the document and then, you know, the LA Times article came out um, and it was getting a lot more traffic. So I did, wanted to do a lot of sort of like cleaning up mm -hmm. and do fact checking, but then we also wanted to, um, to grow the data that we were collecting. So. I think we'll, we'll see a little bit of it later, but um, it sort of turned into a bigger project um, that is now continuing to grow. Um, still called the theater's not speaking out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of the, the impetus and the sort of like response from, from the list. And, and thank you for that. I, what a story. Um, 
That was great. What great story. Um, before, and I, I want to hear Bruce's thoughts on this. Um, you made a comment about how a lot of the white companies reacted. What was the reaction from people of color, black companies in particular? What what kind of happened with them? How how did that conversation what how did that affect or change? Yeah. Or um so for most um black companies, uh, I know a lot of people who run them. And so the response was uh, really great, um, was a lot of support. Um, there was one instance where I was tagged in a post from, um, there's a guy who runs a theater company, a black theater company in Chicago, and um, his company was put on the list. And I think this was one of those moments where, because this I saw some other companies on there where somebody was angry or, you know, um, wanted to devalue the list in some way. And so some people were posting um, black institutions um, as well. They haven't said anything in my response. Well, they don't have to. Right. And so, you know, in three days, there's 300 names. I'm not going through and checking, you know, every single name. I don't know most of these theaters. And so there was a black theater company and the artistic director was really upset with me and uh, like made a statement like, you know, I'm on this list. Like, has Marie Sisko thought about like, you know, the, uh, how this can affect like black theater companies and da, da, da. And I responded and I was like, listen, you know, that wasn't my intention. This happened a lot faster than I thought, you know, mm -hmm. um, there are casualties in war, you know, but I apologize. I deleted the company off the list and then I went through and looked for any um, black companies that I could identify that I knew or either that other people knew and took them off the list because I don't hold uh, predominantly black institutions um, responsible for making a response in this moment because I know that they're dealing with the same things that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them already had made statements, you know what I mean? Um, right. and so, so yeah, but most mostly support. There was that one instance, I don't know of any other instances like that where you know there was a black company that was on the list and someone got upset, it never got back to me. But um, for the most part, there's, uh, I was met with a lot of support. That's great. Um, all right, so I know we'll look at that list in a little bit and uh, that you've been working on. Uh, Bruce, what did you think about when you saw this list and and accountability? What 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 is should this be making us do? Well, you know, I'm uh, I I'm trying to, to backtrack in my head and remember um, how I even uh, stumbled upon the list. I'm not sure if it was in an email or if I came across it in that Facebook group that you mentioned uh, with uh, theater makers of color. Uh, it may have been it may have been one of those. But um, when I heard about the list, it was before um, I felt I think it was it was kind of before it like really like caught fire and spread. So what I saw, I was just like, oh, that's cool. That's great. Somebody somebody making a list and uh, and uh, of, of who's of who's doing what. That's fantastic. And uh, at, at Cornerstone, we are already talked about um, uh, making a statement. Uh, before we knew that there was a, a list of, of people making statements. And, and the thing you said earlier, Marie, about um, uh, with black company, Corners isn't a, isn't a black company, but we have like leadership of color in the organization. Uh, one being myself as the associate artistic director uh, and, um, and our, and our uh, artistic director, Michael Duncan Garces, uh, is from, from uh, he's Cuban and was raised in Colombia. Uh, so we have uh, BIPOC leadership uh, in the company and throughout our ensemble. And our shows uh, are in communities. So when I think about uh, black theater companies and other theater companies of color throughout the nation, you know, when it, at, at this moment, especially with the black theater companies, like you've been making that statement. You've been making that statement with your with your with your season. You've been making that statement with the choices that you're making artistically with people that are in your building. You've been making that statement and your parents mm -hmm. were making that statement and your grandparents were making that statement. And we've all been making this statement for a very, 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 very long time, constant statements in every form you can possibly think of. And so far, what nobody listening, you know? Uh, so I was like, great. I'm glad this is, this is happening. Um, and uh, then there was, you know, a question of how, how quickly you had to, re you, you needed to respond. And it was, it was odd because um, there was this, urgency to uh to get uh, a statement out but also the recognition for myself even you know um being one of the like the major architects behind our statement uh because like I, I don't need to be rushed to make a statement and i don't think this list is designed to make us rush to make a statement i think if it if you felt like it made you rush to make a statement uh there are some other reasons for that and it damn sure ain't this list 
Um, it's probably because of your behavior. It's probably because of your history. It's probably because of your board. It's probably because you know that you're going to show up on this list and it's not going to be right. It's probably because you're going to uncover things that you know you need to take care of, you know, and if that's what you're scared of, good. You know, <laughs> that's what this is for. Um, <laughs> or even if it's not by design, that's what's happening. Then, then good. Um, that's a, that's a great thing. Uh, and we need, we need more about it. Accountability uh, is something that I think, most of these, especially these white institutions, have been able to avoid here and there. You know, you get grant money just for interviewing people, you know, like, and that's it. You don't even have to hire anyone. Just say you made an effort. And most of the time, you know, you hear a lot of organizations, not just in theater, but across the board, uh, when they, when you ask about why they don't have uh, black people on their board, for instance, or 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 in um, in like high positions of power in, in their company or even on their stages, there's always this thing of, you know, we couldn't find anyone. Mm -hmm. You couldn't find anyone, then you weren't looking. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you couldn't find anyone. That's not, an, that's not, that's not an answer that um, was any good then, and it's definitely not any good now. Um, only difference is now we're actually talking about accountability uh, and, uh, and people are going to hold you accountable. The great thing about this list is, you know, now that, now that it exists, um, first, it required, uh, especially as the information expanded to include, you know, like your board makeup and 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 uh, who who who's running what, you know, it, you had to go in and do those checks uh, and take an account of, and take accountability for for your own company and your own institution um, and the way that you're doing business. And that's a good thing. You know, you can find out, you know, at Cornerstone, I think we're doing a lot of things right. But that doesn't mean that we don't have things to work on. You know, uh, and you you know you don't don't get that until until you look for those answers. Uh, so I'm glad it exists. Also, as a freelance artist, you know, um, I I have no interest uh, in working with a company that don't want to work for me or my people. You know, like that's not that's not, I'm not interested in it. So, uh, you know, before I say yes, I'm gonna do some searching and I'm gonna see if you made a statement, if you set um, uh, a standard for yourself, if you said uh, things that you were going to do and then look to see if you started doing it, you know, if any of that work has been done. And if if that work hasn't even been started or you're not even making the effort, then why would I why would I come work with you? You know, um, and at this point, I I mean, you need more me more than I need you, you know, and that's uh that's something that I think all of us need to need to understand um, is that these these institutions and these companies, uh, they don't own your art. They don't own you. They don't own your voice. Uh, and they're asking you to come do work at their company um, because they need you. Um, and uh, and I'm just not willing to work with anybody that's not willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me. Bruce, to hear how you're using the list in a way to really fact check theater companies. I hadn't see, thought of that. Uh, and that that is an, another important tool. It's not only for the white companies to kind of get their stuff together, but now BIPOC artists have a list to say, what is the makeup of this board? What is the makeup of this company that I'm looking to work for? And I think that's a, a, a further powerful tool of this. Yeah, you know, we shouldn't have to uh, to all 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 run to this list to get these answers. Like these, you know, you you, you should be making the this statement should be on your website. You know, the we sh I should if I if I if I go look at the at, at at your who are we section and you have like your ensemble and like your your leadership and your board and you and look at the plays and the seasons and stuff. Like if I don't see a reflection, then what's the point? You know, like you should be you should be putting that information up front. And if this made you do it great mm -hmm. I'm glad it happened you know we, we we got we got some time where we can't be on our we can't be um on our on our big stages and small stages and um and and, and doing things in person so this is a good time for you to uh stay where you are and do the internal work to uh search for white supremacy culture in your organization because it damn sure exists you know, mm -hmm. it's the air you breathe. It's the air we breathe here in America. Like you don't got to try to be racist. You know, like you don't got to try to um, to do any of that stuff. Like it's it's built in. Uh, you have mm -hmm. to actually work against it. Uh, and if this uh, list can and I I say it is because I know I'm I'm definitely using it as that 
uh, a tool to uh, to combat that and to navigate uh, mm-hmm. this landscape, kind of like the Green Book did when it told people, uh, when it told black people where you can go and where you can get food, where you can eat and where yeah. safe as you're traveling through through the United States. You know, like we need those we need those guides because the you know the, none of this shit was built for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was built to exclude right. us. Uh, right. So uh, the the process of of going into these institutions and creating our own and and holding power, uh, it we need we need tools, and this yeah. is a, this is one of them. Well, let's let's then. I think it's a good time, maybe, Marie, if you want to bring up this tool, so we can kind of see, um, and and in. Um, in regards to uh, acknowledging it, learning from this, growing from this, um, the accountability of this, uh, the list itself kind of brings up these things like, what are you doing? How are, you know, physical things, choices of accountability. But Bruce, what other things, like, I, I'm not a big institution, I'm a small producer. Um, and I am taking stock and I'm looking at choices, even with this show, I'm being very aware of who my guests are. Um, is there anything without you know, telling us what to do, but looking at the list, seeing what is suggested we do, what other things besides, I, I get the taking money for diversity programs, just to interview people seems ridiculous. What What isn't ridiculous? What, what would you like to see real changes? Well, you gotta remember these institutions are made of people. Uh, people run it, people make the rules, people do all that stuff. So like, and the, and, and it's only uh, what's happening within, within our companies is only a reflection of what's happening within our people, you know? So, uh, you gotta, you gotta look into yourself. You gotta, um, assess your own relationship, uh, with, with, with racism, with white supremacy. You gotta, you got, you gotta look with, you you need to do that internal work, um, find out. And not just with racism and white supremacy, you know, like, uh, like all, all the, I, I feel at least like all the hate that um at that and an oppression of this country is kind is, is built on um is on a nice huge thick bed of anti-blackness uh and mm-hmm. uh but working uh working on that i think is the way to uh to work through all the hate so it's not just about black people it's about everybody you know uh we all have the work that we need to do uh and to um i don't want to say tolerance but because tolerance just sounds like you're putting up with something but like uh, I, I, i'm not sure what the word, right, right what the right word is at the moment but um you you have you have to to go within and and check yourself and see where you're not treating people like people mm-hmm. um, no matter who they are where they're from or what they look like or any of that like you need to treat people like people and if you're not doing that basic thing uh you definitely shouldn't be in leadership um and i don't want to see the art you make right all right. Well, let's uh, we'll, we'll come back to more of that. That was great. Uh, I'm going to bring up um, the the list here, and uh, Marie, if you want to take us through kind of what you have here, and this is something you're still working on, correct? Yes, we are still working in it. Uh, great. So this is the list. Um, I'll go through the tabs just so you can see sort of the data that we are um, gathering. And so the first tab is um, basically, I guess from like late May to June, we had about 40 people, a team that Victor Vasquez had gathered who were auditing the the list and helping us gather all this data. So these are the initials of the people who were helping to do this work. So first you have the theater companies and then you have the city, the state. And then column E is the um, demographic makeup of that city, right? So we're looking at, who is outside of the theater? Who is the community that the theater is serving? Interesting. We have the artistic director, and then we have whether or not the artistic director is a BIPOC. You'll see a lot of no's um, if you if you take your time to go through the list. The number of years they've been in position, who the chair of the board is, and whether or not they are BIPOC. You will also see a lot of no's here. The managing director, whether or not they are BIPOC, you will see a lot of no's here. Um, The date the Black Lives Matter statement was posted. Um, So again, we posted our list, I believe on 5.30. And so Mm -hmm. both of these, you know, because of just the nature of the list are are after that date. And did they post to social media? 
Hmm. Um, did they post on their website? Uh, most were posting in one place and not the other. Um, hmm. And so it was, uh, or sending out an email, um, but not posting on any social media platform. So that was also an interesting thing to note. And then we wanted to denote whether or not the statement explicitly said Black Lives Matter. Right, like whether or not they made that um, proclamation. Because what we noticed is, I think I, I can't remember where I read this, but um, I saw and was hearing chatter that you know some companies were nervous to explicitly say Black Lives Matter because it was a triggering sort of point for a lot of their their funders or their donors, right, who might be more conservative. And so you can make a statement saying, you know, we are against injustices against people, right? But they wouldn't explicitly say Black Lives Matter. So we also wanted to to sort of capture whether or not they were bold enough, right, to actually say it. Um, there's a note section. Uh, so we want the business as usual posting. Um, we wanted to denote this because we know because of the pandemic, a lot of people uh, had furloughed, you know, probably a marketing person or a social media person. And so if there were like no posts for like several weeks on their mm -hmm. site, we wanted to denote it because maybe it means like there's actually no one there to post a statement. Um, mm -hmm. and so maybe that's why they haven't said anything because they have furloughed or fired this person due to the pandemic. Um, but if they are posting regular, you know, material, uh, you know, throughout the week, then we know that they have the capacity and the people to post. Um, and so that's why that is there. Uh, you know, whether or not they made a donation, whether or not there were future actionable commitments declared, because a lot of people were sort of rushing to put out statements after the list came out. It was just like, we support, we support black people. Um, we're against, you know, this. But they weren't actually sitting down and uh, doing the work of thinking about like what it actually means to make the statement and what it actually means to be anti-racist and what it actually means to be accountable. And so the statements were empty. And because they were empty and there wasn't a lot of thought put into it, um, and they were, you know, rushing, like Bruce said, like, you know, they took their time, they didn't feel like they had to rush, but some people were, because they felt like they had to rush, um, they weren't actually thinking about what it means to make this statement and why they hadn't made a statement and why they probably weren't planning to make a statement, right, mm -hmm. until they felt forced to. Mm -hmm. right. um, number of Black staff and executive positions, um, you'll see that these numbers are, um, sorry, fairly low across the board. Um, number of BIPOC staff in artistic director positions. And we have, you know, non-education, non-community, because you'll see a lot of um, those sort of community engagement roles given to people of color, because it's like, well, you go out into your community and talk to your people, right? We'll, we'll bring you in for that, but we're not going to bring you in for these other positions. And so we, we aren't counting if those people are in these um, sort of education or community engagement mm -hmm. or box office right position. Number of black board members, um, I think you'll see these numbers are fairly low. Um, and number of BIPOC people on the board. Um, some people, you know, we weren't able to find these numbers. Um, some companies were not disclosing them. Hmm. So we also um, captured that. Black playwrights in the season, um, in the 2020 season, black playwrights when they were produced in the 2019 season, and then 2018. And then how many um, plays or musical they produce a year. Um, and then there's some other things that we still are sort of like working to fill out. So actions taken in the last year towards EDI. They have an EDI committee, um, known partnerships with black organizations, known grievances, because we were getting a lot of sort of like testimonies. Their hmm. budget, whether hmm. or not they're a TCG member theater and uh, whether or not they're a Lord member theater. And then the mission statement was sort of a last edition. I spoke with someone and I'm so so bad, I can't remember her name. But we were talking um, about this work because she's doing similar work on the West Coast. And she was like, you know, I think it's important for us to sort of look at look at the mission statements because um, like Bruce, Bruce was saying, a lot of these companies weren't built with us in mind. And so, you know, these companies were created and it was all white people at the table. All the architects were white people. All the people doing the funding was white people. Like we just weren't even a part of the thought process. We aren't a part of the foundation of these companies, right? And so that means that we aren't, thought of in the mission statement. And so a lot of companies' mission statements, you know, say nothing about um, anti-racist practices or um, ways in which they're going to be inclusive. 
And so I think there also needs to be a call for, for companies to sit down and really look at their mission statements and deconstruct those and rebuild those with BIPOC people in mind, right? Mm -hmm. Because if, you're, if your mission isn't oriented towards being anti-racist, then the work that you're doing isn't oriented towards being anti-racist. And so mm -hmm. you know, it's not just about putting out a statement, it's really taking inventory of the entire infrastructure, right? Because if something, if an institution is built on white supremacy, then everything that comes after that is also a byproduct of white supremacy, right? Yep. And so you have to you have to take inventory of every single aspect of your organization in order for it um, for there to be change that is actionable and that we can see. Um, so and then so those are those are the columns, and then I think we're at like four hundred. And I'm sure there's a way to just get to the bottom, but I am not an Excel sheet. No, I, I like the effect. I like I'm the visual. Yeah. And now you don't have to see the scroll action. Wow. Look like at the all scroll those action. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're like 486. Wow. 486, yeah. Beautiful. Wow. I, I had no, I saw an earlier version. I had no idea how extensive this was. That is phenomenal. Thank you. You know, it all, it uncovers a, a whole lot. Even like when you were talking about, you can see uh, like who who the, who's their who's in their leadership, like who's their AD, are they BIPOC, and then how many years they've been in. The how many yeah. years part is interesting to me because I'm like, so you haven't done any kind of uh, any any kind of like internal look at leadership, asking questions about leadership moving forward in the past like 20 years. Yep. You haven't looked at your mission and thought about maybe adapting something to make it applicable to today and the people that you're working with at all in 20, 30, 40 years. Like yep. you needed to do that anyway. Yep. Right. Even if it had nothing to do with how many BIPOC people you had in your company, you needed to be doing that work anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what's really, really, really cool. It's like, there's so many things in here. Um, also the part about uh, uh, statements explicitly saying, uh, a BLM because they might they might be a little more conservative or have like conservative audiences. Thing is, people are afraid to say BLM are afraid because they don't understand it, mm. and they think that their audience doesn't understand it. Mm. If you don't, if you think Black Lives Matter means anything other than Black Lives Matter, <laughs> you're missing the point. <laughs> you know, uh, and a lot of a lot of a lot of people would have the wrong idea. They they the you know when when the current and unfortunate president uh says things like it's a like it's a, a statement of hate it's because he don't know what it means you know i know the bar for his understanding is kind of low but like he doesn't know what it means and that's why um also also i just realized that the you said the list was posted with may 30th, 30th. may 30th yeah. and the second half of the tcg conference was the beginning of june mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh interesting and the entire conference um, had to had to be changed um, because we were we were in it was like the revolution popped off, man. You you acted like you didn't know what was going on, or if you tried to go business as usual, then you're t you, you're just not paying attention. And if you're not paying attention, why should we be here? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the list. Um, I'm currently working with this fantastic young woman who's a data analyst. And so she is now in um, in the spreadsheet and we're thinking of, you know, what questions we want to be asking of our community and what sort of things the list is telling us. So like, you know, one of the one of the charts she's creating is, and this is also a placeholder name and I hope I, we actually find a real name, but like it's a scale of like people who are actually about it, like about this work and people who like aren't really about the work. So we're kind of like about it and not about I like it. it. <laughs> um, but it's really looking at like the statements, looking at the the makeup of the um, the senior staff, and mm -hmm. sort of analyzing and things that have that have taken place, you know, since the events have happened, and seeing okay, who is actually about doing this work, and yeah. who is still like really low on the scale, and so coming up with a scale from, you know, whatever number she comes up with to assess this tool, but really, you know, so people can actually look at a visual and say, oh, so this is where this company lands on the scale of being about this work and not about this work, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. this is where I want to be in this. And people, you know, have the capacity to move further and being about that work and move further down to not being about that work or staying where they are. 
So we're also working with um, a lady, Joy Jackson, who started the Joy Jackson Initiative, who is coming up with sort of uh, like doing the work of coming up with the actual assessment guide. And I know Bruce knows her as well and probably uh, knows more about the work that she's doing. I'm talking to her tomorrow. Um, but she's coming up with an assessment of, you know, how we sort of measure um, who who is in compliance with anti-racist practices and who isn't. And so we're going to be working with her since she's already sort of had, has the language and is doing the work to see ways in which we can collaborate to sort of um, figure out ways to visualize our data. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, the uh, the the I did I did the beta of the assessment and was in their town hall uh, discussing the findings um, and uh, and actionable items moving forward. Uh, and it's it's very uh, it's 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 a pretty it's pretty it's pretty thick assessment. You gotta you gotta go in and and, and you know crunch some real numbers uh, mm -hmm. and answer some real questions and um and and come up with some with some answers about what you're gonna do and what you're gonna do later. And you know. Um, these these tools are to help you you know it's not an indictment of you as, mm. a, as a company or as a theater maker like this is this is to help you make the changes you need to make if you want to keep doing this work and i mean this work is in like making art for people you know if you want to do that work you gotta you gotta do this work mm -hmm. yeah. it so which is kind of a lead into the list came up. It had its first effect. It sounds like now there's going to be the second part, this assessment understanding of all this data mm -hmm. that then can be used by companies, as Bruce said, to help them make those choices. This isn't just calling you out. Yeah. It's saying here is where you stand. Um, let's rewrite those mission statements. Um, and, and start looking from the bottom up. Um, and, and is there, that's just in development now. I mean, I, I hate, it's terrible to ask people now time, when are things going to happen in this time? Uh, I, it's moving along in its own time, but that will be presented in a similar way. It will be presented right now. We are um, planning to present in some sort of digital capacity. So October 1st, we're hoping to sort of have the visuals of the data that we're gathering. Um, when it's sort of released to the public from there, I am not sure, um, but I am taking my time yeah. Um, yeah. to do the work. Um, mm -hmm. We want to, to, to really think carefully about um, what we are asking of people and, and what we're sort of putting out there. And yes, it's, it's for theaters to sort of take inventory of um, things that they need to fix and things that need attention, but it's also for artists to be able to to sort of um, be able to look at a snapshot of the American theater and, and decide where they want to work and where they don't want to work. Um, you know, from, from this moment, there are a lot of artists of color who are like, I'm done with institutions. I'm doing my own thing or I'm going here, I'm going to start my own thing or I'm leaving the theater altogether, you know? But there are also um, artists of color who are like, as long as people want to work brown people want to work in institutions, I'm gonna stay here and try to make it a better place for them, right? And so um, I have a lot of friends who are who are of that mind and a lot of friends who are of the other mind. And so people are doing the work, you know, in all of these spaces. So I think it it can be a tool along with all the other sort of like initiatives and, and coalitions and things that are starting, you know, um, I think all of these tools can be useful for people who are outside the institutions, for people who are inside the institutions, for, for people who are on the fence. Um, and so it's not just list. I think this list. I think it's you know all of these sort of like things we see popping up can be useful for people on you know fighting in different areas of of this sort of battle or revolution, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people are starting theater companies every day. Mm -hmm. you know, like every, every 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 summer, you know, a, a new a new batch of trained artists are like hitting the streets, ready to put together their own five hundred one c three and start making theater. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and the, the big question is always, how the hell do we do this? You know, <laughs> what, what, what are the right things to do? And like, this is a really, this is, this is, uh, it's great to have this, this, um, this snapshot of how, what the theater looks like and, um, and these, see what these, what, what these benchmarks you should hit, uh, yeah. to, yeah. to make the theater that you want, that you want to, to make, uh, and bring people into, you know? Oh. Yeah. It's a great, it's, it's a great amount of information and and the assessment of breakdown of that um 
what I'm wondering without putting either of you guys on the spot with this, just by going through it, do you have, I know you've mentioned some comments about not many, not many people color uh, board members. Do you have anything that you would say now that you saw that really struck you or wait till it comes out? Like from data that we pulled? Just from the data that you pulled that you kind of went through and just kind of going through it. Um, Anything was really surprising. Okay. Um, Maybe not surprising to either of us. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah. Nothing was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> but it might be surprising for you know for for the the rest of the community to to yeah. to look at the list and you know when you go when you look at board members. I'm not looking at the list right now, but I'm pretty sure if you look at the numbers for uh, for black board members, a lot of these companies, the numbers are, are you said they're pretty low. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there's quite a few that are probably at zero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, yep. like and these, like you, I could guess that without without yeah. looking at it. There are plenty of restrictions that, that that keep people that keep people of color off of boards. Um, you know, it's it's not surprising to us, but it is shocking to see um, how shocked people were that there was a problem. White people were like shocked. Uh, you yeah, know? yeah. You yeah. sit in the boardroom <laughs> and, and staff meetings of like. 95% white people, and yet you're confused that there's a race problem at your place. Like, how? Right. You know, so the only shocking thing was seeing how shocked people were. That this, that this out and that people weren't speaking out and that um, black and brown artists were so upset, you know, to the point where people were like doing testimonials on Instagram and Facebook, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, yeah. what are you surprised about? Sorry. Like, come on, all this information has been out there. Yeah. We, people have been saying it. You People have been saying it forever. Even the whole, like, okay. you know, the huge push for uh, d d diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, which really just has always felt to me like, hey, this is the house. We'll let a couple of y'all in, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's always been what that process is. And I don't think it's served. I mean, I, I, plenty of people have definitely benefited from it, but I think it's really only served to make the white people feel better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we shock some more people with that list? Is it up publicly? Is there a link that I can share on our YouTube? Yeah, you have the link, anybody can, can access it. You can't edit it, but you can view it. Okay, so when this tape goes up, I'll make sure to put it in the comments. Um, I saw it, like I said, a while ago, uh, and, and the amount of work it was funny watching it. I saw your team members coming in and out. So this is a, I asked naively before, are you still working on it? This is a very much in action process uh, that hopefully is going to reveal some more, not just a call out list, but some actionable items, mm -hmm. some, some things to do. Um, I, I'm loving the comment about redoing your mission statement. Uh, having started a theater company where they kept telling you mission statements, everything you got to have the mission statement. It sets the whole tone of everything. Um, that seems like a really important uh, step. Um, what other, any other thoughts uh, in terms of accountability um, that you feel that this list will help expose um, that, that white corporate companies, commercial theater companies, even small ones, uh, should be looking at that list and saying how I can change. And it's not just doing a diverse once a month program or the one a year program, right? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's it's not just about the list. I think this is a moment for companies um, to encourage people, white people, especially white people in power in these institutions to take personal inventory, you know, mm -hmm. of, of how they have been in this place for so long and, and were blind to it, right? Um, I think if you start, you know, doing all these like EDI trainings or anti-racist trainings, but you haven't as a artistic director, as a manager director, as a chair of the board sat down and been like, well, how, you know, does white supremacy live in me? Um, how am I sort of perpetuating that in the spaces that I enter? Um, how does this bleed into the way that I work? How does this bleed into the way that I run a staff? Nothing's going to change. So I think people have to get comfortable doing that uncomfortable personal inventory of, of reckoning with how white supremacy lives within them. Um, I think that institutions cannot just rely on their BIPOC staff to come up with demands and actionable items um, and things that need to change. You need to listen and they should be included in the conversation, but you should be sitting at the table, you know, with the 
your shirt's buttoned down, your tie off, the water, sweating with with your BIPOC staff and sometimes alone trying to figure out what you have been doing and how you have contributed um, to, to these issues. Um, so those are two things, I think taking personal inventory and then also not relying on black and brown people to, to do this work for you. Um, and understanding that like when people say dismantle systems of, um, of racism, um, dismantle systems of white supremacy, you know, it's it's a literal thing as much as it's a figurative thing. It means some people may have to step down and some people may have to leave. Yeah. If you have yeah. people in your institutions who have a file, a HR file that is thick as my hair on racism, on, on racist things that they've done and problematic things that they've done, but you keep giving them a pass because of whatever you need to pull at that file and it might be time for them to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, and I've seen this time and time again, you know, um, this person has been there for years and they've done this for the institution, so they don't want to get rid of them. But like, it literally means dismantling some shit and rebuilding it. Yeah. And people have to really get comfortable doing that. So, yeah. And yeah. that goes, I think I was double for, for, for leadership, um, for sure. You know, if you just, if you just realize that there was a problem when you saw a list come up or when you couldn't, you know, uh, have your season as planned. If you didn't think it was a problem before then, then you haven't been paying attention. And maybe mm-hmm. you're not the best person to lead right now. I'm mm-hmm. not saying you don't have skills that you can lend your company or your, or your colleagues, but you should not be in the driver's seat because clearly your eyes are closed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's that's just gonna have to that's just gonna have to happen. You know, you don't you don't need to wait for someone to call you out. Uh, and um, and 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 definitely echoing uh, what Marie said. Like, don't don't put all this weight on your uh, BIPOC staff to do this work. Um, also, uh, in, the, in the vein of, of, of leadership, it's not just about making sure that your staff or some of your patrons get this training or have these conversations. Like you have to show up to the table. Leadership has to be in the room and actively doing this work. And I know for a fact, there are companies out there where they are just putting, and this is not just in theater, this is across the board. There are companies out there that are putting their staff to, to task to do this work and leadership is not showing up to the table and hmm. that's not okay hmm. you need to hold yourself to a h- much higher standard mm-hmm. interesting well I, since we met monday to have our, our talk uh a lot of this has already been go- it's been going through my mind um it's interesting to me that during this pandemic, we actually do have some time to really think about this. I find that I can be much more introspective right now um, and, and think about it. And I, I obviously hope other people do. Um, and and I, I accept that, not challenge, but like the importance of doing that. Um, and so things like the list, uh, words of wisdom really help have helped me with it. So thank you for all your parts with that and, and bringing this information out. Um, do you have any any thoughts on the list before we kind of talk what's next for both of you? Uh, any summation you guys like to share about the list? No, just stay tuned for what's next. <laughs> <laughs> that, that What's next sounds, I can't wait. I, I like graphs and pictures and things too. So, uh, so it will be good to kind of see that all thought out. Um, all right, so Bruce. Yeah. You, uh, muted. you, were, you were muted for a second there. Thank you very much. Um, what's kind of next for you? What are you kind of working on? And uh, how have you been keeping yourself busy during this uh, pandemic? Uh, well, um, I, uh, I, well, I'm learning how to juggle, actually, how to actually juggle. I'm being, I'm very terrible at that. But as far as juggling projects, uh, I've gotten I've gotten pretty good at that, uh, and I, um, I I I keep that uh, pretty constantly going. Uh, I'm the associate artistic director at Cornerstone Theater Company, uh, and we make plays within about communities. And we're uh, we're actively at work with uh, with quite a few shows. We're working in uh, Highland Park right now, uh, in conjunction with uh, Oxy Arts and Occidental College. Um, so we're working on that show. Uh, I um, have been doing a lot of uh, online theater um, with uh, colleagues all around town. Uh, and, and, and across the nation, just uh, as we're all working on this, like developing new form mm-hmm. of theater and uh, looking to see what are these tools we're going to take back into the physical spaces when we get them back, because like yeah. this merger of all these different tools is really going to be beautiful. It's already some really great stuff being made and a lot of lessons to learn and like how you can 
make something uh, with people from anywhere, which is really cool. Um, I uh, so there's that. Uh, I still uh, I'm uh, still hosting uh, uh, Unheard LA uh, with KPCC. Um, our season kind of had to be uh, put on hold due to the, the virus because we do our shows in theaters with like 500 people. Um, mm -hmm. We can't do that right now, but we've been doing some uh, some digital events uh, called a deeper listen where we're revisiting some of our stories. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them, a lot of the stories uh, have uh, have elements that uh, relate to 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 race and identity and how you navigate this world and how people navigate dealing with you or, or working with you. Uh, so we're hoping that people can listen to these stories and uh, and hear something different this time. Um, also, uh, actually, this weekend I'm doing a, a, a an improv show with a, um, a collaborative artist block and improv theater, and we're doing a August Wilson themed um, uh, long form improv, which oh, should be great. fun. Uh, and I'm making my uh, opera uh, debut uh, as a director with the LA Opera, uh, the Anonymous Lover. Uh, this November. All right. Nice. So, uh, there's, there's, there's quite a bit of things going on. I probably forgot some of it, but if you uh, check me out on the internet or, or on Instagram and Twitter, you'll 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 know what's going on. There's, there's always something. You know what, Bruce? Why don't you give me that name quickly, and I'll throw it up on the screen. Oh, uh, wait for my uh, Instagram and Twitter. Oh, you got, yeah, it's, 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 you yeah. got your Twitter there. Whoops, yeah, it's in my name. name. That's 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 that's, that's oh, all. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. That's so all, all of it need. there. That's yeah, all you need all nowadays. There. Yeah. That's all right. Get get the Twitter. That's all you need. All right. Great. Uh, Marie, what what's going on besides the the list coming out? What have you been busy with? What's coming uh, out? Watching really bad reality TV. Married at first, ah. with fiance, all of them. Um, <laughs> also working on putting together an anthology. Um, it's called uh, Post COVID Reimaginings from the Mind of Millennials. So I reached out to about twenty five Black millennial artist friends that I know from designers, directors, actors. Uh, administrators and ask them to basically reimagine what the performing arts world can look like or should look like post corona. Um, and so they are all writing on that, getting in submissions for those. And then I also have a really great visual artist, um, Jared Key, who is going to be creating visuals for each of the reimaginings. Um, so working on that, I'm going to be in Vermont for the month of September, uh, working nice. on a project called the Black Joy Project, which I'm really excited about. And then um, I'm also the uh, New York Development Consultant for the Apollo Theater. Um, so we have a commission of artists this year, and I'm managing all of their product uh, products projects and working with them. Um, and so that's sort of like an ongoing thing. But yeah, those are sort of like the the highlights for me. And I you can reach me at my website. It's right there. Um, Instagram is just my name, Marie Cisco. Excellent. It, it seems that people have been talking about this, like you feel busier now. Like, yeah. Just there's no, there's, so there's no commute, so I can totally be at that rehearsal in an hour. Don't. And, and, yeah, and, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I've got to say, while it was great having this talk on accountability in the list, uh, I would love at some point to get you guys back to talk artistically, too. Um, both of you are working on projects uh, that are very interesting, and I think it's important with this uh, to talk talk about the artistic ideas that we're all sharing. Uh, we're all playing. It's new. I feel like a kid in the candy store um, with all these kind of new tools and new connections, uh, connection with people around the world that I haven't been able to. So hopefully we'll get you back. Uh, thank you both again uh, for your thoughts and ideas. And uh, yeah, I'll hang out with you a little bit after. But for now, let me just thank our excellent audience out there for tuning in. Uh, this is our last show this week. Uh, but we will be back next week with three new shows. Uh, little teasers. We've got company venue from San Francisco is kind of bucking the trend in terms of rehearsal space. Uh, we're going to have a few more directors and artists sharing what they're doing, how they're pivoting in this new world, uh, and asking all of us what's next. So thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See Bye you guys. <laughs>